6 p.m. by Astros o'clock. Viewers, thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the news on Equinox Television. We begin right away with a um, major stories that recent decision taken by the governor of the littoral region, Samuel Dizone Farhad Dibua, restricting the, the movement of commercial motorbike riders in the city of Douala has been adjusted. Instead of 8 p.m., commercial motorbike riders in Douala are now allowed to circulate until midnight. And also that decision was taken by the governor to reduce the rate of insecurity in the city of Douala. In this use case, we will also be telling you that some SDF party members headed by Honorable Jean-Michel Nietzsche have called for the resignation of the chairman Nietzsche and Frundi. Stay with us for details and more. Welcome back, viewers. Thank you so much for joining us to begin this edition of the news. In politics, we told you in the headlines a while ago that some SCF party members headed by Honorable Jean Michel Nicho say they wish that the chairman of the Social Democratic Front, Nicho Prundi, should step down or resign, grouped under an umbrella known as the G27. The SCF party officials and militants say they are acting in the name and also in the interest of the party. Let's now have the details with a staffman for me, I'm Frank Sander. The call for the national chairman, Nijon Frundi, and call to resign comes barely a week after a controversial SDF National Executive Committee resolution dissolving the party's regional bureau in nine of the ten regions in Cameroon. Speaking at the end of a meeting grouping SDF party heavyweights of the literal region, the Regional Bureau Chairman Honorable Jean-Michel Ninchu says the resolution is not in the interest of the SDF party. We met in an extraordinary executive committee of the Social Democratic Front Littoral to say no to the anti-statutory resolution taken on December the 10th, 2022 by an illegitimate National Executive Committee in Yaoundé. The now ex-regional coordinator, as per the contested next resolution, says the Yaoundé decision only exposes the intentions of some top party officials who vowed to sell off the SDF. He says they should resign for the SDF to stand again. Nous constatons pour le déplorer que le leadership actuel du SDF, nos dirigeants. It is regrettable that our leaders are trying to shield their compromising relationship with the current regime. It is for this reason that we call on them to resign. Henceforth organized under a group called G27, Honorable Jean-Michel Nichu and co-SDF party supporters say they will act in the name and interests of the SDF to restore the original ideologies of the Social Democratic Front. We told you in the headlines, viewers, that a decision which was taken recently by the governor of the littoral region, Samuel Dedone Farhad Zibua, restricting the movement of commercial bike riders in the city of Douala has been adjusted somehow. Instead of 8 p.m., commercial bike riders in Douala are now allowed to circulate until midnight to 6 a.m. And that decision which was taken was to reduce the rate of insecurity here in Douala. Let's now have more with a staff lady, Immaculate Fogwe. 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. ban on the circulation of motorcycles in the city of Douala has been modified by Littoral Governor Samuel Jidaneva Diboa. It comes as a sigh of relief to the entire population who are affected by the decision. So people are free to use their motorcycle from, from 6 a.m. to midnight. He however indicates that the ban does not affect owners of private motorcycles but insists Owners of these private bikes will have to present their matriculation numbers alongside their documents. He highlighted the fact that when owners of private bikes carry someone on their bikes, it creates confusion. He has expressed government's readiness to tackle rising insecurity in the region. The bandits are still in a corner, ready to aggress, ready to fight, but 
our policemen, gendarmes, and military people are ready on task to react. According to the governor, other measures such as the spreading of false information on social media, the time bars are supposed to close and that of those carrying machetes around remains unchanged. Those who are using knife, cutlasses and so on, they are still forbidden to use them because you cannot make your justice. <coughs> you have to respect the laws. If you are in danger, please call a policeman or gendarme to come and help you. So if you have a post where you are selling those uh, drinks, you have to respect the time that the law gives you to make it. At least 1,280 motorcycles have been seized due to their non-respect of 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew. The ban was meant to tackle the problem of insecurity caused by hoodlums known as Le Microp in Douala. And now some people from the northwest region of the country have begun going back to villages in the northwest region to spend Christmas and New Year's festivities with their families and friends in the war-torn Bamenda. They say though the war is not yet over, the situation is not the same as it was six years ago. A reporter innocent as I made a stop over at the breast stop or the park in Bonaberry in Duala by night in Altasas Moor in this report. When the Angafon crisis began in 2016 and escalated to an armed conflict, the northwest region witnessed a mass exodus of its population. Travel agencies were overcrowded. People were seen escaping hostilities with their belongings to safer cities like Douala and Yaoundé. Most of the internally displaced persons approached on several occasions by Equinox Television recounted the ordeal they go through to adapt in a strange region. Due to persistent killings, they decided not to return home, being it for festivities like Christmas and New Year, or whatever reason, until peace and normalcy return. This perception seems to have changed over time as influx of these people flood travel agencies in Douala for the northwest region, even when there has not been any ceasefire declaration among the war belligerents. I'm traveling to Bamenda and there is a lot of population that is going to Bamenda, like a traffic jam. Questioning some of the travelers, they told us what is motivating them to travel now. It's a, period, a festive period, so we are going back to join our parents, you know, uh, it's been long we've not seen them and with the family out here we would like to join them in order to celebrate together. I'm going to Bamenda to go and uh, visit my family and then to like celebrate Christmas with them. I have to also go and get family back at home. Since the crisis started I've been here now for three years. If they are driving the oars for end of year festivities, this lady travels for something else. Uh, no, I'm not going for end of year festivities. I will be spending that elsewhere. I'm just going to visit a friend, just for a few days. Traveling to the war-torn northwest region at this period to them has nothing to do with fear. No, why should I be afraid? The vehicle too, one can also be scared of the vehicle because you can still die in a vehicle, so there's no position for that. But the only thing is, God is in control. You know, uh, they say home is home, right? Yes, despite the insecurity there, we, are, we must go back. Yes, it's our home. Uh, despite the situation, we always like to go back to our town. Bamenda is a place to be. A man who went to see off his family told us he has no problem sending his children to the northwest region. No, I'm not scared. No, trust me. The problem is like we, we got a lot of problems with this stuff, but basically for now everything is, is normal. Yeah, gradually things are moving the same. So I'm not afraid to send my family back in Bamenda. Trust me. Now why do we see a lot of people traveling every day, every day? Even though they will be returning to Douala after their visit to celebrate Christmas and New Year with loved ones, their hope lies on end of the bloody armed conflict so that they can pack their belongings back to their region of origin to reunite with loved ones, invest and contribute to rebuild the motherland. <laughs> And now, according to those working at the park in Bunaberi, the complaint is that before now, they used to load at least 20 to 35 breasts 
per night during the festive seasons, but now they load between 10 to 12 buses transporting people from Douala to Bamenda. They say it is because the roads leading Bamenda to other remote villages are blocked or in very bad shape. Let's now listen to one of them in this except. Our transport this year to go to Bamenda is not moving as he, the last year that we was loading 25 bus. But this year we are only in 10 buses now we are loading today. Five, six, yes, things are not moving well this year. It's not moving. Every day things are going down. They are going down. Don't see this cloud like this. This cloud don't mean nothing to us because they, they care more than this. Where there's a job, there's a work, there's a movie. We load about 25 bus. But now, if you are only 10 bus, don't see like this. There's nothing that's moving now. Nothing's moving. For the moment now, all the roads are blocking. To go to the village like uh, Baso, Kambe, all that side, the road is blocked down. People cannot travel safely. The only people are going, are going all around the town. Around the town in Bamenda town, they are going in Santa, Bamenda town, that's all. They go to Baso, all those side. People cannot go. Mm -hmm. okay. Ndop, Ndop, it's, not, it's blocked, everywhere is blocked. Okay. There's no movement now. Yeah. To go to Baso now is almost 15,000. From Bamenda, Baso, not even Douala to Bamenda. Bamenda, but it's almost 15,000. Road is not clear now for the moment. That's the problem. And now, five years after the Zika incident, the government of Cameroon has decided to construct a monument in honor or remembrance of the victims. But the victims, especially the survivors, say they do not appreciate that act by the government to construct a monument because the victims are not taken care of by the government, especially the survivors. And that monument cost about 450,000 francs, 450 million francs CFA. Let's now have more with Mara Glory. Few meters from the train station of Ezeka is the giant structure worth millions of francs EFA built in the memory of the 79 victims who died following the train derailment in Ezeka on October 21, 2016. Five years after the launch of the project, the government finally inaugurates the monument. <laughs> This is a ceremony to bring back memory, a moment to come together to approach victims and equally a moment to express the gratitude of the entire nation to all those who contributed in the construction of this great edifice. A project worth over 450 million francs CFA invested in constructing a monument while the survivors say they are yet to recover from the trauma and are still struggling with their health. Those sad feelings were awakened today. I found myself shedding tears at one point. It was difficult for us to take a decision to be here, but we finally agreed to be represented. Presently, I can't carry out heavy duties, whereas I am an engineer. I'm not supposed to be around smoke nor dust. It affects me because I had a double fracture around my nose. This monument is one of the promises made by the president of the Republic after the 2016 train derailment in Ezeka. A sad memory for passengers who boarded the train number 152 to Douala and who unfortunately never reached their destination. And now we take you to the far north region of the country to talk about Boko Haram insurgency. Insecurity continues to increase in the far north, precisely in the Mayo Tanaga a subdivision where the local population are complaining of frequent attacks by Boko Haram, especially during this festive season. They say it is also affecting their farming activities, causing food insecurity. And the governor, the senior divisional officer for the Manu Sanagam, uh, David Dalo Dibango, together with some other administrative authorities, are looking for a way forward. Let's now have more with our reporter, Lucy Liengu Isi. For six years now, the population of Mayo Tanaga have been living in constant fear because of Boko Haram attacks. According to the population, they don't only face insecurity, but also food shortage. 
Agricultural products have skyrocketed. An average bucket of fertilizer is now sold for 650 francs, 700 francs, which is very expensive. Imagine someone with children. A bucket of corn now costs 27,000 francs. It's really too much. You know, when you are unable to cultivate during the rainy season and during the dry season, you are being attacked by Boko Haram. You then find yourself out of everything which is sustainable. As the end of year festivities approach, the people still live in fear of imminent Boko Haram attacks. This is a reason we plead on the government to reinforce security by sending more personnel, materials, in order to dissolve the gang which is not giving us peace. In a bid to ensure that peace returns to Mayo Tanaga, a security meeting has been held by administrative authorities. We are here to also see the difficulties the authorities and the forces of law and order are encountering and the solutions to be brought forth. The senior divisional officer of Mayo Tsanaga calls on the population to be vigilant and also denounce suspicious cases or individuals. And now we talk sports. There is total joy in the streets of Argentina, especially in the streets of Buenos Aires, the hometown of Lionel Messi, as Argentina are the 2022 World Cup champions for uh, the third time after beating France on penalties in the final in Qatar. Gonzalo Motiel scored the winning spot um, kick, uh, the spot kick to give the South Americans a 4 to 2 victory in the shootout after a frenetic trading 3 new game. Uh, the goals of Argentina were scored by Lionel Messi, uh, who emerged best player of the tournament, plus Angel Di Maria. Kylian Bappe of the French national side scored four goals in the final match. Argentina eventually uh, triumphed to seal their third world title with Lionel Messi crowning an extraordinary career by lifting the golden trophy at the Lusar Stadium in Qatar that was yesterday. And viewers, we will surely be coming back to other aspects of the final match of the World Cup in Qatar in our subsequent news editions. Thank you so much for always being there. We have come to the end of this edition. Don't go away. The news in the French language comes up at exactly 8 p.m. Stay with us on Equinox Television. Bye-bye for now.